do a digital detox without completely unplugging. I get it. You have all of your devices for a reason. You need to be in touch with your family. You need to be in touch with your coworkers, your boss, but life during the most connected era in human history has a lot of problems. Too much technology, whether it's time spent on smartphones or social media or in front of other sorts of screens, they do have unintended consequences. So you might need a digital detox. I recommend to all of my clients that they take at least a three day complete digital detox every year. Um, but you can take little digital detoxes during your regular week. If you use technology too much, it can take time away from activities that you really need like sleep or exercise or socializing, which are all really, really important for your well-being. So today we're going to talk about how to do a digital detox without unplugging completely because I realize that since we all do use this digital world almost every moment of the day, we, there's an expectation that you're going to remain connected. And so a lot of people give up on digital detox because they think that it means that they have to completely disconnect and turn everything off. We're going to talk about a way to do little detox elements without completely turning off. If that sounds good to you, stick around. Before we get to it though, please check and see if you're a subscriber here. And if not, fix that right away. Click the subscribe button and the bell, and then we will have you as part of our guild family. All right, we'll see you in just a second for how to do a digital detox without completely unplugging. Guild Coaching. More success, less stress. Recent research from Johns Hopkins notes that frequent technology use is linked to a whole lot of things that are really bad, like heightened attention deficit symptoms, impaired emotional and social intelligence, technology, technology addiction, social isolation, impaired brain development, and disrupted sleep in some cases. So this doesn't mean that technology is all bad. It means that technology can have a negative effect or a positive effect, depending upon what is somebody, what somebody's doing with it and what they're not doing with it. Also, how often they're doing what they're doing with it. Uh, technology is also really connected with debilitating stress. When, you, when you're scrolling, for example, when you're consuming whatever the next content is on social media, because that's something that you're not controlling the next thing that you see, even though you're scrolling to it. So when something's consuming a lot of your thoughts, then it conditions your behaviors and that's when it starts interfering with your life like your job or your schoolwork or your relationships. So it is definitely time for all of us to consider cutting back on its use. So uh, a study from 2021 found that students who completed a social media detox reported positive changes to their mood, sleep, and lower anxiety levels. And another study found that women who quit Instagram reported, reported higher life satisfaction and more positive effects than women who continued using the social media app. Both of those studies were pretty small, but both of them had the same effect. When you cut down on social media, and that's a little bit of a detox, I'm not saying cut it out completely, but when you cut down on social media, you're able to have time and space for other things that are really good for you. For most people, ditching technology altogether is not going to happen, but cutting down is a much more realistic approach. So to do this, you've got to pinpoint your unhealthy habits and then decide which ones of those you're going to alter. So it's really helpful to get a clear picture of your tech, um, how you're using it, and then re review the time spent on your phone. I know that every week on my iPhone, I get a report saying what my screen time was, how many hours a day average I spent, and if that was up or down from the week prior. Tools like that are really invaluable here. How your time using your tech is divided up with different applications is also a really great place to start. You can identify which areas that you need to begin to limit. If you find that you're putting your attention somewhere that's not benefiting you or your family in some emotional or physical way, um, it is probably taking away from your life rather than adding to it. So remember what constitutes healthy technology does vary from person to person. So there's no magic amount of screen time that's good or bad. You have to find out what works for you and what works for your family. So a few ideas on how to detox without completely unplugging. 
schedule time away from from screens throughout your day. So if you work at a computer, it's really hard to avoid screens, um, which means that it's all the more important to prioritize breaking away. So set up time in your calendar with an alarm on your phone to remind you to go for a walk, eat lunch away from your desk. Remember, leave your phone behind. And some people have said, Dr. Jane, I'm not comfortable leaving my phone behind. Great, put it on do not disturb or silent or whatever and stick it in your pocket and um, take it with you, but don't take it with you in your hand where you're looking at the screen, okay? Take periodic breaks from technology. This can reduce your stress, particularly among heavy users. Um, so right now there's more research going on about digital abstinence. Um, so we can't really make specific recommendations on what it looks like or how long it should last, but just start somewhere. It could mean, um, for example, I'll just tell you what we do. In my family, we have a, um, a digital curfew. So everybody's phones have to be on the charging station at a particular time. Our digital curfew also includes limits on where the phones can go. They don't go in bedrooms. Um, you know, they, they don't do that. Also, you can give yourself a digital curfew on certain types of apps. For example, I'm, I'm allowed to, oh, well, I'm allowed. My own personal uh, self-discipline allows me to go into my health apps first thing in the morning, but not social media apps. Um, so in, in another video recently, I've recommended that you make a a morning folder on your phone with apps that those are the only ones that you'll allow yourself to use in the morning so something like uh, an app with positive affirmations um, maybe a, a breathwork app something like that or a workout app so those might be the only ones that you'll allow yourself to have during those time those times if you're having trouble staying present Eliminate the distraction by replacing your smartphone with a simple cell phone. My teenager said, wow, you know, flip phones are coming back and I might want one. Um, you know, it just really helps you. If you don't have all of the apps present and all of those things right in front of you, then that is a detox in and of itself. Um, I've already given you the, the digital um, curfew idea, but try powering down before dinner until the next morning. If you've got a boss that emails you at night or texts you at night, just this is part of your boundaries. Apple and Android users can enable do not disturb settings that can silence alerts, notifications, all of that. It's a good idea to take advantage of the tools that are built into your phone. And then adjust your phone settings to limit certain apps. I know you can set certain limits for kids, but you can also set certain limits using screen time on yourself, at least on Apple devices. So um, you can set it to only let specific phone calls through or specific apps are allowed to, to be used at different times. Um, that's very, very useful. Um, you can also have no phone areas um, in your office or in your home like I do. I've already told you, no phones in bedrooms. Setting limits um, on apps doesn't always work, so you can remove the device completely from different areas. We have a rule, one screen at a time, so if uh, the television's being used, it's not television and a cell phone or television and a tablet or a tablet and a cell phone. It's a single, sc single screen rule. And we enforced that rule 12 years ago. So just think about where technology was 12 years ago. Most people didn't have like 15 screens around them, but our kids did have a laptop for the school. They had, everybody had a tablet and everybody had a phone. And some, you know, when we saw them sitting with the TV on and the laptop on and their phone, we were like, wait, 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 this is way too much. So you can make your own, your own boundaries. And then also consider reaching out to a coach or a therapist, if you don't have a coach or a therapist, reach out to me. I'm happy to either connect with you to be your resource in that area or to point you towards somebody who you would, who would be the perfect fit for you. Um, when we're all using technology constantly, it can be hard to know the difference between having a problem and not. So if your behaviors uh, with technology or your feelings regarding technology um, begin to interfere with your daily functioning, it might be time to seek the help of a professional. Um, if your self-esteem has plummeted or you find yourself dealing with a lot of anxiety or depression, it's time to talk to somebody because it's probably connected, at least in part, to the technology use in your life. I hope that this has helped you realize that you can detox from technology without completely cutting yourself off and it will be a really 
really helpful and healthful change in your life. If this video helped you at all, give me a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell before you go. I'll see you next time we drop a video to help you live a lower stress life with more success.